What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about how to move objects precisely and some tips that are going to help you do that inside your SketchUp models. Um, so if you're looking for more great SketchUp tips, make sure to check out my free SketchUp time-saving tips guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so last week I was out doing a training and one of the things that I noticed is people were having some trouble precisely placing objects inside their models. So they were able to move things in their models, but they weren't really being um, purposeful in the way they were doing it. And so they were kind of struggling with getting things to go where you wanted them, where they wanted them to go. So I wanted to make this video with some tips for moving objects quickly and precisely in your models. So um, to start off, one of, the, one of the biggest things I want to talk about, and this is something that we talk about when we're drawing lines too, is you want to use the axis inferencing. And what that means is when you're moving objects inside your models, like let's say for example that I'm moving, um, let's say that I'm moving around this counter assembly that I, or this cabinet assembly that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. Um, when, when we move things around in our model, um, it can it can be your first instinct to come in here and just kind of start clicking wherever and then just move your mouse wherever when you're trying to move things. Um, the problem with that in a 3D space though is sometimes you'll kind of try to move this over to the corner and then you'll move this up a little bit and you'll click and things no longer are um, on the ground and then you have to go back in and realign them. And so that's one of the problems natively with moving things around in a 3D space being displayed on a 2D screen. And so one of the ways we get around that is to move along the different axes. So instead of just randomly clicking on a point in space, what we're going to do instead is we're going to take our object and we're going to move it along an axis and then along an axis and then along an axis. And when we do that, we can know for sure that we're precisely placing an object. And so I'm going to skip ahead to this example. We'll come back over here in a second. So like, for example, let's say that I wanted to move this box to this point in 3D space, like a very specific point in here. Well, you can see how right now I've kind of drawn out the path this would have to follow in order to get to that point. And it would be very difficult for you to make that movement. Like for example, if I was to move the box over here and then try to uh, replicate this. So if I was to try to place this um, using the move tool in copy mode into a 3D space, you can see how I can kind of guess, but there's nothing precise about this. Like I don't know if this is in front of or behind this box. Like you can see how when I look, I can't really get this specific movement in here just by clicking in a 3D space. And so what we want to do instead is whenever we move an object, and I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode to start, instead of clicking on a point in 3D space up here somewhere, and you can see how you can't really get it to go where you want, what we do instead is we move it along the axes. So in this case, I'm going to move this along the green axis first, and then I'm going to move it along the red axis. And then finally, I'm going to move it along the blue axis. So you can see how at that point I can actually dictate the point in 3D space. So you just need to get used to instead of moving things one time, you're really moving it three quick times. So you're setting your uh, green axis placement, your red axis placement, and your blue axis placement. And that makes this really quick to move things around. So in the example here, if we were to move this cabinet around, what we would want to do is we would want to take this and we would want to move this first along the green axis so we would line it up along the green axis where we want it and then we would take it and we would move it along the red axis so you can see how by doing that I can very precisely place this in the corner instead of just picking kind of a random point and trying to move this back here you can see how it gets really diff difficult to try to place this precisely if we don't move this along the two axes and so the second thing I want to talk about is using the axis inferencing and so what using the axis inferencing is you can see how when I move my mouse, when I set this point and I move this this direction, I'm moving along the red axis. But as soon as I move my mouse off of that axis, then you can see how this kind of starts jumping around. Well, what you can do instead is you can hold the shift key in order to lock this 
along that axis as soon as the inferencing starts. So as soon as you do that and you move your mouse over a point, you can see how I can then move my mouse wherever I want to and click on a point to align something really easily. And so that's kind of how we're going to do this is we're going to we're going to lock these to the different axes when we're moving them. So that way I can move my mouse and place it on a point on this wall and I can place this really quickly. It's also going to be really important to pick the best move point or the base point. And the reason for that is because if you don't, if you just pick a random base point in here, it gets really hard to place this exactly against the wall. Like you can see how when I move this along the green axis, I can kind of guess where this would go, but I can't actually use this to snap to the wall. However, if I was to go in here and pick a point on this rear panel, like right on this corner, and then hold the shift key, I can just move my mouse over this face, and this is gonna inference straight to this face, and it's gonna kind of uh it's gonna kind of stick to that point. And so by doing that, I can then do the same thing with this front corner where I hold the shift key and I move my mouse right against this wall. So you can see how by selecting a point on the ends and then using that inferencing, I can move this so that it aligns with something really quickly. And so finding a good inference point is going to be very important when placing objects in your models. But sometimes you can't necessarily find a super good inference point. Like for example, let's say I have this sphere in here. I don't want to place this on the top of this uh, pole. So if I wanted to take this sphere and place it right here, it can be kind of difficult to do that because you don't really know which point you want to use in order to do that inferencing. And so what we can do in this case is if you understand how the geometry of the sphere is created you know that this is actually made up of a whole bunch of flat faces and edges so what we can do is we can go up to our view and turn on our hidden geometry well you can see how when we turn on our hidden geometry there's a point on our sphere at the base that's a very natural point to inference from and so what we could do is we could uh, take this whole sphere and I like to group it just so that the faces don't merge but we could use the rotate tool in order to take this and stand this up like this and then you can use that point as your point from which you're going to move and so in this case what we could do is we could use this central point as our base point and then we could just move this along the axes to intersect it or to align it with where we want on this model. So in this case I'm going to move this along the red axis first and then the green axis so this will kind of align this in the center because I can use this hidden geometry as the point to which I inference to and then all I have to do is just move it up and down along the blue axis. So you can see how I can hold the shift key in order to do that. And I may move this above a little bit and then move it back down. But you can see how by using that hidden geometry I can take this and I can create a point where this point touches this face. So you can see how I can place this on top of this cylinder really easily. And so another tip for doing this is you may also want to come in here and turn on x-ray mode. And so you can find x-ray mode in the styles toolbar in your tray up at the top of the page. And if you don't see that, you can right click and go down and find styles. And I also have that map mapped to a keyboard shortcut. Well, when I turn on x-ray mode, what that does is that allows me to actually see through the faces in my model. Well, when I can see through the faces in my model, you can see how I can inference or I can use them as a base point even though they're blocked by a face. So in this case, I can just take this and I can move this over this point and then I can hold my mouse until I get an inference point in the center here where to lock and I can click there. So by turning on x-ray mode, you can actually see through this to find a point like this one that you can't see with x-ray mode off. Okay, so the other thing you could do is you could also come in here and create your own inference point. Like for example, let's say I took the base of this cylinder and I'm gonna turn my hidden geometry off for a second. Let's say that I clicked on the base of this cylinder and you can see how this is a circle. Well, with, in the case of a circle, you can actually right click on it and you can click the button for find center. And when you do that, this is gonna place a point inside your model that I can then use as my base point. So you can see how my mouse locks to this. Well, when I place a custom base point like this one, it gets really easy to, 
or when I place a custom guide like this one, it gets really easy to inference to that, giving me something that's really easy to move from. And so like for example, let's say that I also did the same thing on the top of this cylinder, where I right click on the edge, and note this only works if you click on the edge of a circle and click find center. Well now, I could select this object, I could turn x-ray mode on, you can see I can just pick this point I can just drop it on top of this point really easily and then I can turn x-ray mode back off. So sometimes creating your own inference point is a good idea. So another another time that this would be helpful is let's say for example that I wanted an inference point right in the middle of this set of squares. Well, you can see I don't have one right here but if I was to use like the tape measure tool whoops and I was to drop a set of guides like this and probably you'd want these all to be in the same group but now I can use the intersection point of those guides in order to place this wherever I want to go so like for example if I wanted to move this to the top of this face you can see how that's really easy to do because I have the intersection point of those guides so sometimes you just want to create your own inference point so a lot of the time you can you want to move things precisely and I think a lot of people know this is here but I think they also kind of forget this is here but you can use the move tool and just click on this point and then just type in a distance so like for example if I typed in five feet that would move this five feet based on whatever the base point is that I set so you can use this to very specifically move objects around based on a distance. So don't forget that you can move things based on a distance as well as just clicking on a point in space. So then the last thing I want to talk about is I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand the way that the base points work inside of uh, using the move tool. And so what I mean by that is I mean your base point doesn't have to be on your object. So if I select this object and then tap the M key in order to move the object, I don't have to click on this object. I can set the base point anywhere. Meaning like, for example, let's say I was to align this with the end of this point right here. And then I wanted to move this so that this point now lines up with this. You could definitely use the move tool and hold the shift key and inference this over here and click on this point. That works great, but sometimes it's even better if you have an edge like this one, you can set your base point on this edge. You can set your base point wherever you want. So you can see I can click off of my object and then move my mouse wherever I want to go and this is still going to move. So in this case this could be really easy to just take this and just slide this along this line and you know that it's aligned based on using a base point that isn't on your object. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Um, did you know all of these tricks? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.